Welcome uh, to this workshop where, uh, where we'll show you how to work with React Native, how to develop mobile apps using React Native and programming in JavaScript, and we'll show you some uh, tips and tricks, how, to, how, can, how you can be more efficient, and uh, how you can, uh, several tools that can help you to be more efficient and to de develop faster, develop app faster and better apps. And also, uh, we will uh, go through React Native as such, so you will learn the basic concepts of React and React Native, and uh, we'll also build something today, something concrete. And my name is uh, Jerko, and uh, this is Domogoy. He's here to help if you uh, encounter any problems. Just uh, you can ask at any point if you have any questions, interrupt us and ask if you have problems, and he will help you, or I will answer if I can. And uh, to start, uh, we would first like to know uh, what kind of background uh, do you have? So what kind of knowledge uh, uh, do you have? So what kind of experience with technologies that we'll be working today you have? So uh, for, starting, for starters, if you can raise your hands if you worked with JavaScript, but uh, this means that you haven't just worked with jQuery, so you developed actually something like a service or an, a single page app or anything more than just selectors in jQuery. Could you raise your hands? Okay. 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 And uh, JavaScript ES6 or newer? Okay. And uh, React maybe? Right. Okay. So all the same people. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe React Native? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. And uh, has anyone heard of Shoutem or worked on Shoutem? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, this is just something to know um, what to focus on. What to focus on more and um, okay, thanks. Um, so for the workshop, uh, a short overview of the workshop what will be covered today. So for starters, we will, I will give you uh, this introduction, what, uh, what's, what's the idea, what we, are, what we are working on. After that, uh, we'll go to basic concepts of React and React Native and go through, after that, uh, we'll go through several tutorials and uh, to get a hands-on experience with the basic concepts that we talked about previously. So we will uh, go through prop state and all that. And uh, in the end, we will start working on our own app. So you will build a web summer camp app where uh, this app um, has several screens and features. So this is how it will look like. So you have a screen where you show a schedule that is uh, uh, talks from this conference. After that, uh, we will build a speakers section where you can uh, see the details of each speaker. And then if there's time, we'll also build a, a My Ticket screen where you'll be able to scan a QR code and you will get uh, uh, information from your ticket on, on, on the screen in your app. So this is the idea. So it's, it's um, Maybe uh, it will maybe be, be a bit challenging because we have people that haven't worked with uh, any of these technologies before, but we'll see how far uh, along we'll get and uh, we'll try to help you to uh, do as much as we can. Okay, so let's start about uh, talking about React Native and React for, for the beginning. So React, uh, as you probably all know, is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It was built by Facebook. It is several years old, and uh, there are a lot of uh, large, big companies that are using it. And uh, it's open source, so people are contributing and developing uh, and improving it all the time. Uh, currently, it is at version 15, and the next version that's coming out with Fiber is 16. But uh, it's relatively stable, so at one point they just decided to switch from, I don't know, I think 0 0.12 to 12, and now it's stable. So, yeah, it works okay. Uh, and the, the core concept that React uh, introduced was uh, unidirectional uh, bindings. So this, uh, before that, uh, the libraries usually have two-way bindings. So the, uh, the idea was to have a model and a view, and each time a model updates, the view updates as well. But also when the view updates, the model will update uh, as well. So you have two-directional binding. And uh, this sounds all good and nice, uh, but when you have a bigger app, when you start working on something more complex, you can get in situations where it's very difficult to reason about your system, and it's very difficult to understand what is 
going on because you can have bindings that depend on other bindings and uh, you can get a mess and uh, all, all, the, all the network of, the, of those bindings and you, you don't know how to debug it and stuff like that. So the idea of it unidirectional uh, data flow was to simplify all that and, and to make it more easy to build complex systems. And unidirectional data flow works uh, by having a view and a state. And the view is always, always works by just rendering the state, nothing else. So uh, when anything in the app changes, this means that your state must change and the view will render it. And the view only responds to uh, two inputs. So it either renders the state that changed or it either uh, reacts to a user input or any other, other external input. And uh, usually when the external input comes in, uh, the view will dispatch an action and this action is the mutation that will happen on the, on the state. So there is a concept of a store uh, that, contain, that handles all this logic. So uh, it handles all the actions that are coming in, changes the state and gives this new state to, to views. And the views only respond by rendering the state. So every Everything goes in one direction only, and it makes it uh, much easier to, to determine what is going on in the system because you can always uh, look at the actions that are being triggered and see what, uh, what uh, changes uh, are supposed to happen, and you can always examine your state and see uh, in what state your application is currently and what is going on because everything is there. So this is the main uh, benefit of React, and some other things that React uh, introduced was, uh, or is, uh, are the following. So direct is only a view framework, so it doesn't handle everything. It just handles the rendering of views. It's, uh, for example, Angular is more like a full-scale framework where it gives you everything. It gives you how to fetch data, how to store data, and all that, uh, in, and all, be all in between. But React handles only views and rendering of those views. Everything else is up to you, and you can use any technology that you want. There are best practices how, uh, of certain frameworks and tools that you, should, that you can use with React, but it's up to you to determine if you want them or not. And uh, the other big uh, thing with React is that uh, it has declarative uh, components. So when you, when you build your UI, you just declare uh, what the final uh, component should look like. So you don't, uh, uh, you don't worry about what should I change in my view. So the text changes and you don't say, okay, update the button with ID this and set the text to something. No, you just say, I want my new page to look like this. So it has a button with text this. So it looks like you are re-rendering the entire application on every change, but this doesn't happen actually because there is the reconciliation algorithm in play here that the framework provides and the framework builds a virtual DOM of everything uh, that is rendered and you are just returning new, state, new, new layouts from your components and this uh, algorithm will determine the minimal set of changes that actually need to happen on the real DOM and just uh, perform just them. So you don't have to worry about that, should I update this or not, uh, is this expensive and all that, the, the framework will handle this for you. You just say, I want, it, I, I want my screen to look like this, okay? In the next step, I want it to look like this. And everything else is handled by React. And another uh, important thing is uh, also, it's not, you can use it or not, but it's recommended that you use immutable data structures because it allows you to efficiently compare what changed or not in your state. So when something changes, if you have immutable data structure and you have a deep hierarchy of state, you can just compare one node in the root, for example, and say, okay, if this reference changed, that means that something in my data changed and, and maybe I need to re-render. If you don't have immutable data structures, the references remain the same and then you need to uh, perform deep equal operations or something like that to determine if something changed or not. So in uh, bigger and larger projects, this becomes important and immutable data, structure, data structures can be useful for you. But you don't have to use them if you don't want to. And the, the only required function of React, uh, of, a, of, each, of each React component is the render function. And this is the function where you are rendering your uh, UI. So this function returns the UI that will be rendered on the screen. And the reconciliation algorithm will look at that and determine uh, what should be updated and what shouldn't be updated in your app. And this function uh, just returns your layout and it has, um, it, it, usually you are writing JS6 in this function. So this is the syntax that, uh, React introduced, uh, so they, they 
turn around the concept of how to write UI. Uh, before that, you, all, you usually had uh, markup languages that uh, you could inject JavaScript into, and with React, is, it is the other way around. You have full JavaScript that looks like markup uh, because they are using uh, a, different, uh, a bit different syntax that is uh, translated through Babel in uh, actual JavaScript calls. So you are writing J6 and you are returning your UI here and you are usually using props and state in your render function and this is the more, most important function of your components. And about React Native, so this is the framework uh, that also Facebook built, it's open source, open sourced and uh, it allows uh, mobile develop, uh, web developers to, or any other developer for that matter to build uh, native applications using React and JavaScript. And how it, how it does that is by, using the, uh, by having a bridge that uh, bridges the JavaScript core with uh, native components. So in React Native, you always get uh, the views that are being rendered on the screen are actually native views. So you are uh, working on, uh, you're working, uh, you are writing your views like React views, so you're saying, okay, I want a button or something, and the actual button that will be rendered in your app will be native component. And uh, this allows you to have applications that behave like native applications that have the same look and feel, that have real native animations, but you are writing JavaScript. And uh, the idea with React Native is to learn once and write anywhere. So the idea is not like other frameworks, most of the other frameworks that are cross-platform, that they, they say write uh, once, run anywhere. No, you learn once and then you can write for any platform. But you are writing another uh, different code for each platform if you want. You can also reuse your code if you want. But it's up to you to decide what to do. So the React Native is just a framework that allows you to learn one technology and to work on multiple platforms with that knowledge. And the, you, so you don't have to uh, learn Java for Android or Objective-C or Swift for iOS development. You just learn React Native and that's it. And this uh, is just an image of how React Native components work. So you have uh, components in the middle, like button, list view, or whatever, and they have multiple implementations. So list view here has the Android list view implementation on Android. This is the native list view component, and it also has a UI table view on iOS. So when you say list view in your uh, UI, uh, the actual component that is being rendered will be one of those, depending on the platform that you are running on. But you are always uh, using the one API, one interface in your code. You are just saying list view. And okay, now we'll go through several tutorials and uh, show you on concrete examples how everything works. So you can follow along by opening Facebook GitHub IO React Native, or you can just watch if, if you don't want to. <laughs> And uh, so this is the getting started React Native tutorials, and um, they have interactive code where we can uh, just change stuff and show on some examples how everything works. So they are saying here uh, you can build real native apps with React Native. Uh, so you don't need to, uh, you don't need to compile your code. It's important. Can you see all this? Uh, is it too small? Uh, yeah, or it's too small, or <laughs> and like this. Yeah, so you don't need to recompile your app. You, you can just develop it as a web app. You can just uh, change the code and it will uh, refresh and everything will, will load. So you don't have to recompile, you, you don't have to wait to build your code. And you can use native code if you need to. You can implement different components and they would work the same way as uh, they would in the, as, as, they are as if they are implemented with React Native. So let's go through the basics. So this is a hello world example. Okay. Okay. So this is a hello world example and it's interactive. So if I type something here, uh, you will see that uh, on the right side it updates. So we will explain uh, a bit here. So it, it is using ES6 syntax. So for those who don't know, uh, we are using import here instead of require. This is just a statement to import something. Uh, it's, it works the same as require, but it's just a different syntax. So we are importing something from React and something from React Native. We are also creating a class here that extends a component. So you don't have to use uh, some, let's say, hacks in like in old JavaScript to actually extend classes. Now you have the, the syntax that says, okay, extend from this class. So this is ES6. And you can define functions like this in ES6. And this is a render function 
that is returning a JSX code. So it looks like HTML, but it's actual JavaScript, and we will show that you can actually do whatever you want here with JavaScript. And the specific uh, thing about React Native here is that you, uh, in the end, just register your component uh, to the native library uh, under some name. And this means that when the native screen renders, it will render your component as the root component of the app. You just need to do this for one component that will act as a root component of your app, and everything else is just plain React. And the only difference between React Native and React is uh, the components that you're using here. So instead of using a div or span or something like that, you'll be using text, button, label, and that's it. So if you know React, you can learn React very, very quickly. You just need to get familiar with the components that are used in React Native. Okay, and for example, I said that this is real JavaScript, so I can do something like this here. I can say const um, content is, uh, for example, let's say that, uh, that I want to print an array of uh, something here. Uh, I can map through this, and I can say something like this. I turn a text and uh, let's say hello. Okay. Uh, uh, C is not defined. Okay. I need a string here. Okay, uh, now this works. And uh, for example, maybe I want this below this text. And if I put content he here, it doesn't work. Uh, it says unexpected token and all that because I need to return only one view from uh, my React Native component. So I need to wrap this in something. And in React Native, we are usually using views to wrap stuff. This is just like a div, but uh, it's a native view that doesn't have any UI. So if I wrap this in view, I also have to import it from here. Okay, now everything works. And if I add my content here, I will also get three hellos below it. Okay, and maybe I want to print the text here. I can print it like this. I just say uh, text, so I get uh, text ABC. So I'm using real JavaScript here, and I can also do something like this. So I have, I have extracted this above because it's usually easier to read this code, but I could have done this. So I could have just started writing this here and it also works. So people usually extract it in variables because it's easier to understand what's going on. But you see that you can use real JavaScript. It's not just some templating engine. It's real JavaScript here. OK, and so uh, other things that we can do here. So we have props and states. So for those familiar with React, you know what those are. So props are some attributes or uh, parameters that you can give to your component. They are like input parameters for your component. And uh, for example, we have an image here, and it has a source prop and a style prop. The source prop means, OK, the image will receive something that it tells it what to render. And you can see an example here, the image is rendered like this. If I change this source prop, it will change it. Uh, for example, if I change the dimension here, it would uh, render a bigger image and stuff like that. And uh, this is mostly about props. So props are not, uh, the component cannot change its props. It uh, can only receive them and render them. And the component that determines the prop, the values for the props, uh, is the parent component that is sending them in. And uh, you can easily define new props by just start using, if you just start using them. For example, we have, we have a component here that has a prop called name. And uh, so you have a greeting, name one, name two, name three. And for example, if I want to add another prop that is like a surname, I can just say this props surname. Okay. And uh, I start using it here. And, and you see that the space appeared because I added this space and this is undefined. But for example, if I add a surname here, it appears in the app. So I just added a new prop, I just started, if I just used it in my layout and I passed it in when, when, the, component, when the component was being rendered. So the, the only limitation to the props is that the component cannot update them. So this greeting component here cannot update name or surname, it can only receive them. If you need something that you need to update, then you want to use state. So state is uh, an internal, internal values that the component has. So for example, here we have a blink component that, that is blinking some text. 
Uh, it has show text in its style and it's setting up an interval that changes, toggles the text to true false e each second. And so this is something that the component wants to change, so it's, it declared that as its state. And you can toggle it as ever, uh, however you want. And if you have multiple values in your state, uh, you can just pass in here a subset of the state and only that uh, property that you passed in will be changed. So uh, set state function patches the existing state with the object that you sent in here. And uh, the, the state uh, here, uh, this is the initial state, and uh, uh, it is important to set to call set state each time you change the state because uh, the React uses the, this function call to, 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 to determine that your component needs to re-render. So if you don't call set state, if you directly change the state property above, uh, it will not change. So the component uh, will have the same state that it had before. So you have to call set state. This is the only important thing about state. Uh, okay. We'll be using all those concepts when we'll be building our app and then we can go uh, into more details about them if you have any questions. And so uh, we'll go quickly over several other things about React Native. So you have style. Style works the same way, mostly the, in the same way like the CSS, but uh, not everything from CSS is supported in React Native, And uh, but the things that are, are supported work in the same way. You're usually uh, attaching style directly, like inline style to your views like this, and uh, you have usually defined uh, style objects like this, and you say color, font weight, font weight, font size, and the only difference uh, to CSS is that uh, the property names are camel cased instead of uh, a snake case or something like that. So for example, if I put a background color here, gray, the background behind those items becomes gray. And uh, you can see that uh, we have big blue and red styles here. And if you want to merge them, you can do it by passing an array like this. So you say, OK, I want uh, styles red and styles big blue. The big blue will win here. Uh, and here, big blue, then red, then red will win here. So red overrides the color of red to blue. And you can see that uh, of blue to red, and you can see that the color is red here because this is this line. And the other line is here, so this uh, the blue is more important because it's to the right. So this is the way to actually override styles if you have multiple styles and you want to change something. And uh, when you are layouting something in React Native, you can use absolute dimensions by just specifying width height, or you can use flexbox. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with flexbox, but this is something that is. Uh, uh, implemented in uh, all newer browsers at the moment, and it is uh, it's, it's a web web standard that allows you to lay out something. Uh, so you can say that an item is flexible; it will stretch to cover a, the entire parent. So, for example, if I remove this flex one here from this view, uh, it is collapsed to zero because it, it it doesn't inflate. If I return flex one, it covers the entire screen. And uh, flex, you can also set uh, different values here that determine uh, how much size will this item uh, take. So for example, flex one means that this item is of size one, and flex two means that the second item is twice as large as the first one. So if I put something like five here, this one will become bigger. And you can also use flex direction and different properties. Flex has a lot of properties to achieve uh, different layouts. So for example, if I say flex direction row, uh, everything is uh, rendered from left to right instead of from uh, top to bottom. And I, I can also say row reverse, and everything will be from uh, right to left now. And there are many other layouts that you can use in flex. Uh, you can uh, search. Uh, flexbox in Google, and you will get a, a, a short, like a cheat sheet for everything that can, that you can do with Flex. And um, what's important? So there are several native views in React Native here. So for example, we have a scroll view. You can just put uh, child items in the scroll view, and it will render them. You will get a scroller like this, like this here. Um, where you can scroll through your app, but the scroll view will render everything at once. Uh, if you have uh, like a large list of something, you don't want to render everything. You want to render only the, the items that are visible on the screen. And for that, you are using list views. And the list view here uh, has an interface to uh, where you can define the data and the render item function that will render one of your items. 
and uh, this will allow you to uh, the list will then uh, optimize those rendering calls to to render only the items that are visible at any given point in time it will re unload the items that are not visible on the screen and it will only load the visible items and this is much more efficient if you have some large scrollable list uh, through which you want to go and you don't want to use scroll view for that because it will become very slow as the number of items uh, starts growing in your app uh, okay, we can go to networking quickly. If you want to fetch something from the internet, you can just use fetch calls. You can also use, uh, so you're probably familiar with fetch, you just uh, provide your endpoint and some parameters like method headers and stuff like that, body if you have it. And uh, you can also, um, you can also use async await if you want to uh, make your code look more synchronous. This is ES2017 uh, standard. And uh, you can also, this is just an alter alternative to promises above. So this is like a quick crash course through React Native, like a overview. So do you have any questions maybe or something that, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it actually runs on the device, so it depends on the device. Uh, on uh, iOS, it runs in Safari WebKit uh, engine. On Android, I think they, they, they are actually shipping their own app with their custom engine, but it's just a newer version of WebKit. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, that's the point. So the, the you have that bridge in React Native that all the calls, the, the, when you need to render something, it just sends a message to the native and says, okay, render a view called this on uh, this and this location. React Native will actually do the layout calculations and all that, but it will tell, tell the native, uh, render your native view here. And then the native will actually render it. So it works like that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, if you're doing something complex in JavaScript code, then you can get uh, bottlenecks because JavaScript in sing is single-threaded and in native you could have multiple threads, but you can't use that. So you have to be careful what you're calculating on your main thread because if JavaScript, for example, you have animations that can be uh, animations dri animation drivers that can be JavaScript animation, dri animation drivers or native animation drivers. If you're using JavaScript animation driver for something and you're calculating your anim animation in JavaScript, it can uh, turn out uh, to slow down your app because something else is processed in JavaScript and you cannot uh, calculate your frames fast enough. So the idea is to offload as much as possible to native. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can write your own library in uh, any native uh, technology that is supported on the platform, and then you can just implement the bridge in JavaScript where you can expose your functions or maybe your components to React Native, and then you can start using them, using them from JavaScript. Okay, anything else? Okay, so. Uh, the next thing is just a quick overview of the ecosystem for React Native. So in uh, React Native, uh, you can use any editor you want, uh, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, Nuclide, WebStorm, whatever. Uh, we are usually using uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so a, a lot of the browser uh, editors also have uh, support for React Native uh, with auto-completion and even debugging, some of them. Uh, for state management, you have Redux, Flux, and Mobix. Uh, we will be actually working with Redux today, so we will uh, talk about more, more, more about Redux later. And, but you can use uh, any of the alternatives here, or maybe any other library that you wish, as I said, because React Native is not opinionated. Uh, for type checkers, you can, you can use Flow or TypeScript. Flow is uh, Facebook technology, so it's better integrated in React Native, but you can use type, TypeScript as well if you want. Uh, there are several UI toolkits available. Those are like libraries that are, that give you a set of uh, components, like Bootstrap for web. So some of them are na uh, native based, React Native Elements, and Shoutem UI toolkit. We'll be using Shoutem UI toolkit today, of course. And uh, from other tools, we have Expo, Ignite, Create React Native App. Those are the tools that enable you to actually get onboarded more quickly, uh, to uh, not have to set up the entire native environment to build your app. And you can preview it, preview it in export. Create React Native App is uh, like a templating engine that gives you a boilerplate code for your first app. Uh, 
For publishing, you can use code push to push code changes uh, over the air to your uh, builds without resubmitting to Apple Store, for example. You can just ship your uh, 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 JavaScript code uh, through an endpoint in a zip and it will download in your app and your app uh, code will update without actually having to update it in the store. Or Fastlane is a tool that has a number of um, scripts and tools that allow you to faster submit the app to the App Store. It's just uh, to avoid clicking through all the interfaces that you have to do when you are submitting your app. And as a platform, the, there is Shoutem at the moment that uh, brings all this together and gives you uh, the environment where you can manage all your apps to uh, together and tools that uh, enable you to faster develop uh, your React Native app. We will talk more about Shoutem now. It's just a quick overview, and then we will start uh, building our first app. So Shoutem is a product of Five. Uh, Five is a digital agency here, and uh, we have be been building uh, native apps for a number of years, and we uh, actually figured out that uh, a lot of the code and uh, a lot of customers uh, want similar things when they are ordering their apps. And we realized that we are uh, rebuilding the same things all over again. Just uh, the 60 to 80 percent of apps uh, have some common functionalities, and it's uh, just uh, stupid to actually rebuild something all over, uh, over and over again. So we wanted to create a product that would help us to reuse code across uh, multiple apps. And uh, so this is the the Shoutem product is a product that uh, allows you to uh, build React Native apps. Uh, from reusable extensions that can be installed into multiple apps and you can also as a developer uh, expose an interface to your customers where they can manage their apps and customize them after they, they have been uh, finished. And you can also build extensions to uh, sell to other developers if the, this is something that, uh, for example, you have integration with some service that someone else need, uh, needs and you can build that as well. And uh, Shoutem has uh, been uh, built on React Native. Uh, it is fully extensible. You can extend everything uh, from our extensions that we built. Uh, they are all open source. And also, you can extend even our backend, where you can allow your customers to customize uh, their app by building React uh, web pages where they can customize uh, certain things of their apps. And also, we have developed uh, tools for developers that allow them to quickly get started and develop their apps more easily. And uh, because it's built on React Native, uh, you have uh, apps that actually look and feel like, like native apps. Those are some of the uh, some of the example apps built on Shoutem. You have native fluid animations, you have native uh, look and feel, and uh, the the people usually can't distinguish uh, a React Native app from a real uh, native app. And this, uh, we have also built several open source libraries that uh, enable uh, developers to quickly build beautiful apps. For example, here you have an examples of components uh, from our uh, UI toolkit that is something like Bootstrap uh, for web, as I said earlier. And to accomplish all that, uh, all our apps are fully modular. We have a small core that just loads uh, extensions, and everything that we have built in our apps is, has been built from extensions. So we wanted to do that to, uh, to make sure that third-party developers can build anything. So uh, uh, we, we actually don't have anything special that is available to us that is not available to the community in general. Uh, so everything that we have built, uh, we have built as an extension. And over the years, uh, as we have been developing our apps, we have built a lot of those extensions, and all of them are open source. So the idea here is that you don't start from scratch. You, you want to build an app, and you just uh, uh, don't think about creating an app from scratch. You, you say, OK, I will build a new app here. I will uh, enable and install extensions that are already available. If something that is available is not to my liking, I can customize it because it's open open source easily, and then uh, if something is missing, I can just program that and build that uh, and focus on the thing that is missing, so focus on something that my app, my app has, un that is unique to my app. Because uh, people usually have a lot of features that are shared, for example, authentication, um, uh, then uh, push notifications, analytics, crash reporting, uh, then some smaller features like maybe RSS feeds or YouTube videos or uh, something like that. And you, you are spending a lot of time on developing those features, and they, 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 those features are not a core concept of your app. Of your app. You want to build uh, the thing that is the core of your app and focus on that and uh, make that as best as possible and just disregard everything else. And this is something that uh, Shoutem enables you to do. 
and uh, how the development process goes, you create your new React uh, native app, you reuse extensions that are already available, you customize it, customize them, you can customize them through the web, or you can also customize them in the code if, uh, if the change is larger, because a lot of extensions have a web UI where you can customize certain uh, options that developers enabled you to customize, and uh, whatever is missing you can just develop. And this is how the web interface looks like where you can customize your app. And here in the middle, this, the entire part in the middle is the, the uh, website that developer can, uh, can build when building their extensions. So uh, this is the uh, main navigation extension here. And the entire part in the middle is the uh, web interface page of that extension. So the, the developer implemented several screens in the app code. And then uh, it exposed uh, uh, the UI for users that they can select which layout is active in, in the app. And uh, when you uh, customized and uh, configured everything through the web, you, you can install uh, our developer tools and just pull the entire project, the entire code locally and start working on your source code. So everything is open source and you get the just plain React Native project uh, that you can uh, change whatever you want inside and uh, run it, uh, debug it, and work on it as, as you would on a normal React Native app. So there is no overhead for Shoutem and you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so are there any questions maybe about everything that happened before now? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the, yeah, uh, there are some things are paid and those things are usually uh, the things that uh, are uh, costing us money. For example, hosting. Uh, you can use our backend as well to store data. So you have a CMS where you can upload your files. You have, you have an analytics backend where we, co we collect analytics. You have push notifications, stuff like that. So uh, the idea is that uh, extensions and everything is free and you can detach from Shoutem. You can use third party APIs and then everything is free. But if you are using our backend, there are services, then we have to make money some way and we are uh, charging for that. Okay, so uh, we will now start building our app. And uh, this is the app that we will build. Uh, as a first feature, we will build the, we will build the uh, schedule screen where uh, we will display a set of events we have an events extensions that we will, extension that we will reuse. And uh, those uh, events will be talks on this conference here. Okay, and uh, then after we will uh, go to the next screens, but we'll explain when we come to that. So uh, as a first step, you should register to new .com. So if you can open this in the browser. So it's new that shouten dot com. I will open it here. Uh so this is the page that you should end up. There is also a shoutem.com page that is the old version of the shoutem and we are not working on that. And then you just click sign in and you click create an account instead here and then you enter your email and password. Do you, uh, do, do you all of you have a Slack uh, account uh, app installed? Because we published some links in the JS channel on the Slack, so it would be nice if you could have this open so that we can also share some other links when needed. And do you, so do, you, uh, do all of you are working on a, a VirtualBox machine or uh, how many of you are working on VirtualBox and how many are you? of you are working on your own devices. Okay, so most of people are working on their own. So do you have any, everything installed that is necessary? So in the virtual box machine, we installed the uh, Shoutem CLI and Node 7. So this is the bare minimum that you should have. So if you don't have that, you should install it. Um, okay, we will, uh, I will add a slide to explain what to install. So you, you need to have Node 7, and uh, you will need to install Shoutem CLI by running uh, 
this. And we also shared some links uh, before. So how many of you installed the app that was shared on Slack? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, everyone will need this app in order to test your apps. So if you don't have it, uh, you should install it. Uh, we will need it later on, but maybe it's nice if uh, people just start doing this before, just uh, if you we'll have any network issues here the, so that not everyone does it at the same time, maybe. Okay, so uh, uh, Dom Magoy published a link in the Slack channel to create your app. So we, we have prepared a small template for this uh, workshop that uh, this is an app that only has extensions that we will need so that uh, to speed things up so that you don't have to search for extensions to install and stuff like that. So if you click on that link after you have registered, it should create an app in, uh, in your accounts uh, that will, will be called Web Summer Camp. Okay, so uh, when everyone does that, then we, we can go further. Yeah. Yeah, there is a link in the Slack channel, in, G in the JS channel. I mean, I can type it here, but it will be hard to... Uh, So you should get something like this when you create your app. <laughs> well, yeah. So other services usually give you an option to set a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. after you logged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a new feature, so obviously no one thought of developers when building it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Can I sign out now? Can I create yeah, you can create a new account. Uh I'll do the same. Uh do you have a Gmail? You can just add plus behind it, it will be the same email. Yeah. So if you uh, plus behind the Yeah, or? this is uh, it's a feature of Gmail. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, now we can. Uh, so this is the empty, an empty app on Shoutem. It doesn't have anything inside it, and uh, you can click preview here to preview it. But I don't know if uh, everyone should do that because we are streaming video here. From uh, we have a servers. We have servers that are actually running simulators because it's a native app, and we are streaming video into this app here. And uh, you get a native app that is uh, running on a real simulator that is streamed here. So maybe. If the, there will be problems with issue, maybe there will be issues with internet because everyone will be streaming some video. You can also preview it in your app. If you log in, you can click that project there, and it will load it in your app, and um, it will just load the project in your native app. So this would be less uh, resource in intensive for the network. And if you click it, you will see that um, now I will get an empty app. It will just say that uh, there are no screens in this app. And now we will start adding content here. Yeah, this is taking longer than expected. Okay. okay, yeah, it loaded. So it says this app doesn't have any screens. I don't know if, if you can see, okay. So now we will add uh, our first uh, extension here and we want to add events to have the schedule in the app. So I will click on events here. So there's a plus up there and then events. And I will rename it by clicking here, rename, and then I will type uh, schedule. And if I now refresh, I should see uh, one tab that says schedule. Yeah, it takes a long time to load here, but it will. 
you should also be able to see our project inside of the preview app. So you can just click it inside of it and enter the app. It should display the empty screen, or if you added a screen, you should see the first screen in your app. Okay, now you can see my device. So this is how it looks like when you open it in your device. So it says, uh, please create content because then you have one tab there. It says schedule because I added that tab. Okay, and now uh, we will add some content, create items. Have you guys cloned the, the GitHub repo that we prepared earlier? There was a link. If you yeah. didn't, we can clone it now because you're going to be needing the. Yeah, in that repo you have uh, assets CSV, and you have several CSV files there that you can use to import some content in your app so that you don't have an empty app. And so you're talking about the yeah, 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 that project. It should have been there, but I, I don't know. I could. Yes. Yeah. yes. Is yes. it there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I will select uh, events here and open. Yeah. Assets. You're going to be using assets and then CSV. So those are the ones you're going to be needing. So you, you, you create, uh, you click the three small dots above and import. So we're going to be importing some CSV data that we prepared for you earlier, so you don't have type it, type it in, just to get some content. And then you have to map all your values here. They are named the same, so you just have to click. Some some values are missing, though you can just skip those. Uh, it sh no, it should be under assets. No, up, up. Uh, even more up. And just shot him. Just shot him. And after okay, you assets. import it, you can just close the screen. Okay. Here. Have you updated the repo? Okay. Okay. And now, on your devices, you can shake your device, and you get a menu here that has close and reload. And okay, you can see that. When you shake your device, you get this menu, and then you can click reload to get the new app. So you just shake. And so this is what happened when I uh, imported the data. So I got some grid here. And uh, we don't want that layout because uh, if you remember the design here, it's a list. Okay. So this extension has several options. So you can click on layouts and you can change your layout to list. And I will also change the detail screen to detail screen with medium photo because this one is much closer to our design. And then you shake again and reload after you change those. And you get this list like this. OK, sorry. It looks like this. And after you click on something, you get a detail screen that looks like this. It has a description and a location. So what's happening here, you're changing the configuration of your app through the web interface, and then your app pulls in that new configuration and re-renders itself with that config. And everything, what you see here is extensible, so you could build new layouts or anything else. And we're going to be do the, doing that today. Okay, I will add uh, two more tabs. So we will also add people for speakers and gallery for photos. And I will import them as well. You have uh, the same CSV files and everything is the same. So this will give us like a skeleton app that we can start working on. Assets. 
Ćeć prvo. Ok. I sad ću vam to importati i pitat će koju kolumnu da veže za koji podatak. Just once, next. Sad ih tu treba samo popikat. Koji na što? Start time, start time i tako. Da sam ih nemoj isto da budu lakše. I onda samo shake, zanimljivni, i reload. I to je to. Shake, baš ja. Ok, hajde. Ok. So, the first, the first thing that you want to do here is to add a new screen, because this is the, the empty app, so you don't have anything here. And you click, do that by clicking the plus button about the, yeah, there, and then choose the events. Because we're adding a list of events, it's here, right? So I'm just adding, uh, I added speakers as well as schedule, and now I will add photos as well. You have added the event screen, right? So you want to add some content to it. And the events extension ex is exposing an interface for you to add some data. It's actually now connecting to our CMS, but you can swap that with anything else you, you want. Okay, so now you can click the context menu there, above, 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 there, and choose the import, right? So now importing the data for that screen, and it's going to be events data, and you can use the, as, uh, the events CSV that, that's in asset folder of the Git repo. Just, you just browse it and it should, it should just give you, the, give you the selection, right? So it's... Where you clone the repo, which it should be there, right? <laughs> it is somewhere. <laughs> going to be asking you now to connect the data to, to the columns of the CSV, so just press next, and then you get the drop-down menu to, to pick. Okay, so you should now map name to name, start time to start time, and everything like that. Okay, then just shake the device and choose reload. Have you installed preview app? Yeah, the one. Okay, so when you import everything, you should get three tabs, yeah. schedule, speakers, and gallery, oh, you should enable, uh, and uh, they all should have content if you if you yeah, imported everything co I correctly. <laughs> so um, after you import everything, then we can start customizing stuff. So, for example, if you go to the schedule, you can change your layout to list and detail screen with medium photo. Those are the closest to our design. Uh, on speakers, there is nothing to do, and the gallery, there are two layouts, you can pick the one that you like mo more, but the first one is maybe looks better because we don't have many images. The second one is uh, just a grid of images that works better if you have a large gallery. So we will leave it at the first one at the moment. And the other thing here is that uh, the app, uh, if I open the app, it doesn't have the real colors of this conference. So we will now uh, customize the style a little bit through the web UI as well. So if you click uh, style, you can get themes. So we have several themes here, but uh, we will uh, leave it at the first one because it's, it's okay for our needs. And uh, we can click customize theme and then we can change, change some of the colors. So we will change those to get uh, an app that looks more, more like uh, the design. So there is this uh, color E26957. That's the orange color that we'll be using in several places. Uh, and so I will go here and I will change the featured color to this color. And I will change the button. I will change the navigation selected item to this so that we can get the orange icons in the tab bar and selected border to get the line below the tab bar also in this color. And also I will change the button color to this 
and the secondary button background and border this is not all that important but uh, it looks nicer so if I reload now you can see that the, the color here has changed the icons in the tab bar below have changed and if you go to an event you can see that add to calendar is also orange here okay so we could do all this without any coding and now we have to customize stuff because we want to change certain things the first thing that we will be changing is the layout of this detail screen because there is a, a huge image above but this this image is okay <laughs> there is also a github url that we will be, will be adding uh, okay we can start with with the github url so uh, if you click on speakers uh, each speaker has a Twitter or uh, any other social profile links that they can have, but it doesn't have a, a GitHub URL. Ah, sorry, you are not seeing my app. So when you open speakers, you can see that they have pro profile links below, but uh, we would like to add a GitHub URL uh, to because this is a developer conference and this is something that isn't built in. So this is just a small change that we will make initially to add a new property in the uh, data and uh, display it in the app. So this is the first thing that we will be now doing. And in order to do this, we need to start using our developer tools. So you should uh, have uh, installed shoutm CLI command line tool and log in by typing shoutm login. I am already logged in here. So if I type shoutm show, it will say that I am logged in as, uh, as WebSC user. But, uh, sorry, can you see? this and in order to get the code of your app you can just uh, go into any directory that you want and you can say shout them clone it when will ask you just when you're logging in for the first time with the CLI tool it's gonna be asking you to register your developer name it's like namespacing your your everything what you're be, we're gonna be doing and you can choose uh, uh, what lowercase letters and dashes. So choose wisely. Okay, so if you have done everything before, you just need to type shout and clone, and it will clone your app locally. So it will pull all the source code of your app, and you will get a React Native project locally where you, we can start uh, programming into. Yeah, the same project, but it will pull your app from your account, and then you will be able to push the changes to your account. The virtual appliance... No, you, you just uh, do it anywhere else. Just don't do it in that repository. The repository will, be, will serve just like, as a reference uh, for you, but you will pull the, the fresh app, but it will look just like the, the one from the repo, but it will be from your account. Yeah. Because the entire app uh, lives on our server, on our backend, and this will now download your app that you have built with your extensions. Is this model a social button approach at the end? Hear me now? Yeah, okay. I have already done this here, and uh, I have opened it in Visual Studio Code here. So you can see that it is just a React Native project. You have your package JSON here. Have you have uh, uh, node modules and everything else that comes with React Native. And the en only special thing here is that extensions directory where all your extensions live. And the extensions that are here are those that are installed in your app. There are several system extensions yeah. that come preloaded that are handling certain things like analytics okay. or uh, the, the entire core yeah. application. <laughs> Uh, architecture and the, there are custom extensions that we have installed for example people uh, photos or uh, events 
So those three extensions are that we are actually using, and the other ones are just system extensions that are needed for everything to function, function correctly. And now we will start uh, modifying the people extension by Sorry. changing the uh, people detail screen and adding the GitHub URL. Um, so after, um, so have you done the shout and clone command? Is it running or oh, you, it, it finished? Okay, finally. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, after that, you can open that project in any editor you want, the the directory that was created. And the next step that we will do, we will uh, fork the uh, shouting people extension because we want to change it. We want to add a GitHub URL to shouting people. And there are several ways that we can accomplish that. And uh, the first change that we will make, we will actually fork the extension and uh, completely create our own extension from the code from a shouting extension. And to do that, you can go into your app extensions and then uh, you find shout them people and just copy that directory and rename it under your developer name you just say uh, web sc in my case and you say whatever developer you are instead of shout them Okay, so after we have copied this extension, um, we can open it and start modifying it. So the first thing that we want to change is to go into server, data schemas, people, and we want to uh, add a new field to, to the people schema that is the GitHub URL, so that someone on the back end can enter this, uh, this field when entering people. So we will copy the website URL that is already there and just rename it to GitHub URL. It's a type of string format URI, and we will say GitHub URL and priority 12. So we need a higher priority than the last one. This is just used for ordering. And we will also need a talk ID later on. So we can add this as well just to save time. So if if I add a talk ID here, uh, it will be type string, uh, single line. Okay, so you will have to modify the uh, your extension, server, data schemas, people, and add GitHub URL and talk ID. Okay, so this will, will this will create two fields on on the back end in the database, so that we can populate them when importing new data. Okay, and the next thing is to display this uh, GitHub URL uh, when displaying the user. So now we will go into App, Screens, People Detail Screen. And this is the screen that renders details of one of one uh, person, and we can go through it. So it, it's best to start with the render because this is the entry point. So we can see that uh, we are rendering uh, some scroll view, some image here, and stuff like that. And in the end, we are rendering footer buttons. Those are, are the links uh, below the the information of the user. So if I switch back to the app, so these are the buttons below, web, Twitter, LinkedIn. So this is what we want to change. We want to change that and add a new button here. Okay. So if we go back to the code and open the render footer buttons, we can see that we are rendering here web, call, tweet, LinkedIn, Facebook, email. So we can just copy one of those, paste it at the end. You, you can put it wherever you want. And we will say uh, GitHub. So the first argument, this is the function below. 
the first argument is the icon name, the second one is the name that will be displayed uh, on the screen, and the third one is the URL that will be opened. So we want to say GitHub, GitHub, and we want to say person that GitHub URL. This is the the field that we added uh, to the schema a little bit before. So if I open back the schema, you have GitHub URL here. So we want to take this from the person and use it as a link that will be opened when navigating to when clicking on this button. And after that, so this is all the changes that you need to make to add a new new button to the to the uh, to the screen. And now we want to see if this works. So to do that, we will go into um, extensions, WebSC that people, and we want to push this extension to Shoutem so that it will be detected by the backend so that we can re-import the data and all that stuff so that, that we get those URLs before they will show in the app. If we were making just the local change to the app, we wouldn't have to push anything, but we are now, we have made changes to the server part as well, so we have to push it uh, to the to the backend. So you just type uh, Shoutem push here, and uh, this should push it to the backend. Okay, it says success. And uh, now if we open the web dashboard here and refresh the app. We have actually forked this extension, so we will have to reconfigure it. We will have to remove the old uh, speakers and re-import the new data because uh, the old uh, speakers didn't have GitHub URL and all that. So we want to remove this, delete. And we want to go under extensions, plus to add a new extension, and you click my extensions. And then when you click my extensions, this new extension should appear here. So we have people in development, uh, outer WebSC. So this is my custom extension that I forked. It's under my extensions. Under extensions, we have people that are original people that were developed by Shoutem. So under my extensions, I have people, and I can install it now by clicking install. It says successfully installed. If I go back to the app, now I can add a screen, but uh, I want to add a screen from custom section. Custom section is my custom screens. So I, I want to add people screen from custom section here. If I click that, it will add my custom screen that I just modified to the app. And I, will, I now have to repeat the process, so I have to import new data and all that. Um, Speakers is the title that I want to use. And I, I, I have to import new data because I want to a GitHub URL to show up that uh, wasn't imported on, on, pre, on the previous run. So I click Create items, items again, Import, CSV, Browse, Speakers, Next. And I have to link everything, so First name, last name, title, biography, image URL, LinkedIn, Facebook, You can see that uh, GitHub URL appeared here and talk ID appeared as well. So these are the two fields that we added to our data schema. They are now visible on the back end when linking uh, fields here. So I want to link those to GitHub URL and talk ID from my CSV import and click next. Close it, okay, I, I now have the new data here. And because we reconfigured the app on the server, I now need to go back to the root of the application locally 
and I, I have to type shout and configure to pull those changes from the server again. So it will pull the new app configuration that I just changed. Have you added it to the schema before pushing? Can we check? No, in the CSV. So, have you pulled the latest changes? From the CSV? Yeah, for, from the repo. Oh, I have to get pulled. Get pulled, yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Should be there. Okay, so configure it now finished. And if I reload my app, Спишек. Да. А, значит, так. Ну, это само весце, по-моему, так это. Custom extension? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, I see. Okay, just. Why is it doing that? Oh, sorry. I, I've seen the navigation bar on the bottom. It seems like some layouting issue. Perhaps we can try to debug it. Yeah, okay. So we skipped that because um, no one actually asked. Uh, so you can type shout and run in your command line and you will get a QR code. 
that you can scan to uh, get uh, the code from your local build uh, to your preview app. You can also get this code if you are pushing it to Shoutem. If you push everything to Shoutem, then you will get uh, the same code there. Yeah. But uh, if you do this, then it serves the local files, not from yeah. the server. It serves the local files, so you uh, can you don't have to push anything to Shoutem if you want to see the changes that you made. And now I have run the app in the yeah. um, simulator, so it may be easier to show you like this. So I have run React Native run iOS because I have a Mac and I can build the native build here. And uh, this is the app with the changes uh, with the GitHub URL. So if you open the profile, you can see that you have a GitHub here. And when you click it, it so opens the GitHub the URL no. the back of that user. So this is something uh, that you will get when you change the schema, push this no. uh, up to, the sh to no, shout just, them, just here. and uh, also uh, import new data and update the screen to render That's the GitHub depending button. Depending on the number of extensions. So this is the first change that we are doing today. But do you need me to... No, just reload it. Just reload it. React Native. Yeah, just reload. Shake and reload. So the next, uh, the next thing that uh, we will do is uh, create a custom extension of our own that will customize another extension by extending a layout in it. So we will not uh, be modifying the code of the extension. Instead, we will be adding new functionalities to the existing code without uh, touching the, the existing code. And uh, we will create a new layout. So if you go uh, to the Shout and Builder and you have, for example, click Schedule and you have Layouts tab, so we will add a new layout here. So it will just appear as an option when we are finished. And this layout will be the details layout here that will remove the, the top image. And uh, we will also be adding a list of speakers below each uh, event. So we will have talks, and each talk will list a speaker that is speaking on this talk. So this will be the modification that we will be do doing as part of a new extension instead of modifying the existing extension that, so that you can see that you can also modify uh, stuff without ever touching the original extension. But Because with forking, you, you now have to maintain this code. You have copied everything over, and now this is your code, and you have to maintain it. We are planning to add features like Git so that you can say pull from origin that will merge the code, the new version of the Shoutem extension with your code, but those features are not yet finished. So at the moment, if you fork, you have to maintain it yourself after that. But with uh, this change, uh, you, uh, you will not be modifying the existing extension. You will just be adding an alternative screen to the existing functionality. And we'll be doing this now. So to start with, uh, I will initialize a new extension. Uh, by going into extensions and typing shoutem init uh, conference schedule. This will be the name of my extension. So, uh, okay, it asks me, uh, ask me, asks me for a title. I will type conference schedule. Version 001, this is fine. Description, we'll skip this for now. Okay, it has created a new extension here. And uh, if we now go to code, uh, we will see that we have WebSC conference schedule. And it has an app and the server folders. And in the app, it created an extension JS and index JS, and that's it. So there is nothing here. So as the first thing that we will be adding here, we will be creating a new screen. And we can do this by typing, by going to the extension, WebSC conference schedule. And we can type shoutem screen add, and we can call it just to have the same name as your example, conference event detail screen. Okay. It says that it created this screen, and now if I go into my extension, I can see that I have screens and conference event details. And here is just a hello world screen. We will not be using this, but uh, this screen just uses plain React Native. There is nothing custom here, just React, React Native imports and the screen. Uh, but uh, we do not want to do this. We want to extend uh, from the screen, uh, from an existing screen from the event details. So we will now go into uh, WebSC people. No, Web uh, Shoutem events. We want to extend from Shoutem events, screens. And uh, here we have a detail screen. Uh, 
So we can look at it and see, okay, this screen is exported from the extension. So we can extend it. And uh, we will look at the code here. So the first thing that we want to do, if we open the presentation, uh, if you open your app, you can see that there is a huge image at the top of the screen. So we want to remove this. This is something that we don't want to have. If I open my app here, I have a simulator, okay, I can do this. So if I open it, there is an image here. We want to remove this image. And uh, if we are go if we go into the screen, we can see that we have render screen, and then it renders a screen, navigation bar, and that then it renders some data here. And in render data, we have render header. This looks interesting, so we go into that and uh, you will see that it renders this initial image. Uh, we, and we don't want that image, we want the, the tile layout that, uh, that is below it. So uh, we will go into our screen first. Uh, we will open the conference event detail screen and we will now import the screen from the original extension. So we will say import uh, from shoutm that uh, events, screens, details screen. So this is the screen that we found there. And I want to import the details screen and I will also need map uh, dispatch to props uh, because we will be connecting it to Redux. Okay, and now instead of uh, extending from the component, I will be extending the detail screen here, okay, from the original extension. And I will remove the render method because I don't need it. And I will remove this style as well. And I will implement the render header method that we saw there that receives an event. And we need to return something here. Um, And now, uh, we can search around. Uh, we also have a documentation uh, for our UI toolkit. So for example, if you go to GitHub Shoutem.io and you open Shoutem UI toolkit components, you can see that we have a bunch of components here and one of them is headers. And then we can find the header that we want to use and use that, but uh, we already have this implemented in one of the other layouts in the events. So we will just take this function. Uh, it has render without photo. So we want this a tile and it has a headline details and add to calendar button. So if you look at the design, uh, I don't have it here. If you look at the design, it has a uh, headline details and this uh, add to calendar button. So this is the layout that we want. So, I mean, you could just build this layout from anything, but uh, we will just take it because it is exactly what we want here and just paste it here. Uh, return. And now we need to import tile. This is from Shoutem UI. So we will say import tile from shoutem UI. And when we open the original screen, we will see that it is connected to Redux like this. So we will copy this as well. Okay. I have copied it from the wrong screen, okay. It's like this. So, we have imported map dispatch to props, and uh, there is no map state to props, and we also need to import several other methods here. So, we need to import um, import connect uh, from uh, React Redux, so this is a Redux stuff, and we also need to import 
connect style from at shout them team. I will explain all this in a minute. And we are also missing uh, import ext from extension. And we want to replace the detail screen with this new screen here. Okay, so this is the basic version of our screen. We no longer also we no longer need a component here. Okay, and we don't need this from React Native as well. Okay, so what are we doing here? Um, so we are extending the detail screen from an existing extension. So this extension is called Shoutem Event Screens Detail Screen. And you can import it like from yeah. any other NPM module. Yeah. So every extension behaves like a normal NPM module. So we can import anything from it. Cool. And we, we have imported our detail screen. And also it has map dispatch to props that it, that it exported for us. So we don't have to think about what this screen needs because we, we, we just want it to connect, connect it to whatever it needs. So we have imported it as well. And uh, so the other imports are connect and connect style. So to explain connect style is uh, something that Shoutem developed. So it, we have a library called Shoutem Team that allows you to uh, style your entire application in one place, to have one file where is your team. And this team is passed down to all your components and all your screens. And this connect style says, OK, I can style this screen using conference event details screen name when I'm building my team. This is just that, nothing else. And connect is a Redux uh, function. So I don't know how much you know about Redux. But the point of Redux is that um, you have one single state of your entire app. So everything that your app uh, is using is in one object, and this is the entire state of your app. And uh, when you are uh, connecting, so the connect function is uh, serves to filter the part of the state and actions that your component needs. So it receives two parameters. The first parameter is map state to props. This parameter maps anything, any data you want from state to your screen, to props of this screen. And the second one is map dispatch to props. Map dispatch to props usually maps functions or actions that your screen needs to dispatch to, uh, to props. So this screen, for example, if you open detail screen, you will see that in map dispatch to props, it has open URL and navigate to. Those are the actions that this screen is using and dispatching. So for example, when you click on something, it will dispatch open URL that will be handled by the system. Navigate to is, uh, is used when you want to navigate to another screen. So we want to keep it working. So we are uh, importing this map dispatch to props and passing it down. So the connect will give it these functions so that it can dispatch them whenever it needs to. And this is the connect. So connect actually just passes down the props from uh, React uh, Redux state uh, to the screen. And uh, so connect style is for the team, connect is for Redux, and we are overriding one function here, render header, and we have changed it to return this component because this is by a component by design that we want to use. And this is the, the entire screen to remove the top image uh, from from the detail screen of uh, the event. So, do you have any questions maybe about <laughs> something? Yeah. Sure. So if. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, you will have to push this. This is a new extension, so you have to you will have to have to actually push it to the back end, install it, and then uh, reconfigure your app as you did before. But after that, any change we will be making other changes in this extension, and those other changes will be immediately visible. This is necessary only when you be, when you are building or creating a new extension. And uh, any other case, it just works, it just reloads. Because, yeah, yeah, you usually just create your extensions in the beginning and then you just uh, update them and work on them. That's it. Okay, and we also need to do one more thing. 
So we have to declare to the backend that we want this screen to be a layout for the original screen of the events extension. And we can do this through extension JSON. So we have these screens here, and it says, OK, I have a new screen called event details. But we don't want it to be just a normal screen. We want it to extend, extends, and then we need to type the original screen name, shout them that events that uh, details screen. I will check this in the events extension to be sure that it's correct. So if you go into shout them events and extension JSON here, you will see that it has details screen here. So we want to say our screen extends details screen from that extension. By declaring this, we are saying that, OK, this is an alternative to the original screen. OK? And we can give it a custom title here. We will say uh, schedule or talk, talk, talk details. And this will appear in the builder when uh, selecting this screen. Okay. So now we can push this extension to Shoutem by typing Shoutem push. It says success. And if we go to the builder, so this dashboard here for management, we are calling the builder. Um, and we refresh it and go under extensions. Click Add, My Extensions. I can, you, you can see that we have a conference schedule here that isn't installed, so we will install it now. It says successfully installed. And now if I go into Screens and open Schedule and click on Layouts, we have a new layout here called Talk Details. Okay, so we have now added a feature to an existing ex existing extension through our custom extension without modifying the existing code. We have just imported some uh, classes from that extension because we didn't want to copy paste them, but that's it. So this is uh, you can actually create a new, completely new screen without even touching the existing code with the same uh, principles. And I can now select this layout, and it will become the active layout for the for the screen. And now, to see this in the app, I will have to reconfigure my app, so I need to kill the packager that I have running. And go back into the root of the app and type shout and configure to pull the new installation and the new layout and everything from the back end. Okay, it is finished. And I want to run the packager again now. This is shout and run when you are pre previewing in the mobilizer app that you have installed. But I have a native build here, so I can just say npm start. And I can refresh.
and if I click here, you can now see that there is no image at the top, but also the back arrow is white. So this is the next thing that we need to change, uh, because the back arrow and the entire navigation bar was created for for it being above an image, and then the white color usually makes sense because images are dark usually, but now it's completely white and then nothing is seen. So we will change this now, and this will be just a local change because now the extension is developed and updated and everything, and now I can just change the code and reload, and I will see the changes immediately. So I can do it now by going to conference details screen. And if I also look into the details screen, just a moment. There is a method here called resolve now bar props that returns some uh, options for the navigation bar, and one of them is style name clear. This means it is clear, it is transparent, and I want to change that. And I will also change the animation name just to get a nicer looking navigation bar. So to do this, I will go here. I will just override the resolve navbar props. Okay, and I want to put style name, no border. This is a style name that uh, will give me just a flat navigation bar without any borders. And I want animation name, uh, boxing. This animation, uh, when you start scrolling, it creates uh, like a box around the navigation bar to give us a nice effect. We don't need this, but uh, it looks nicer with it. So I have added it here. And I will spread the re remaining options so that uh, if someone else wants to override this, can also uh, have a chance to override something. OK, I have made this change here. And now it should be enough for me to just reload the screen in the simulator. So I'm not pushing, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just reloading here. And now it should fetch the new code. And when I open it, you see that this is a black arrow now instead of white. And when I start scrolling, you see that an, uh, a border here appears. This is the boxing animation. Below the navigation bar, you see a line. I hope that it's visible. Yeah, and the navigation bar is black. So I have now made changes and just reloaded the app without pushing any anything to shout and because the extension was already installed and configured. And this is the normal development flow. You usually just create your extension and just update the code uh, locally. Okay. The next feature we'll be building is the we'll be adding speakers at the bottom of the event list. So we will show which speaker is speaking on the uh, on the event, and when you click on the speaker, it will load it and it will open the details of that speaker. Okay. So we will we will be con we will continue working on the on the same screen that we started working on because this is the same layout. Okay, so now to do this, uh, we'll go to the details screen as well and see uh, what is rendered there. And you will notice that we have a method called render data that has a render header, render RSV button, uh, render map, and all that. And we want to render the speakers below the map. So we will just override this method. We will copy it over to our conference event details. Put it here. And now we have a scroll view here, so we need to import it from Shoutem UI. Okay, this is fine. And now we want to add at the bottom of this, this that render speakers. Okay. And we will implement this method here, render speakers. Okay, so we want to render something here. And uh, we can also go to the detail screen and see how other things are rendered. So for example, render information here has a view and then ha it has a divider that is a section header. We want the same behavior, and then instead of the HTML here, we will be putting speakers. So we will copy this, go here, and just say return 
this. Okay, now we need to import, okay, we don't need the HTML, we'll remove this. So we need view, divider, and caption. So we will import those. View, divider, caption. And here, uh, the Uh, no, there is no import here. Yeah, yeah, I removed everything that wasn't done, uh, that wasn't necessary. Okay, now we are rendering uh, just a section header with with speaker. Okay, we'll put speakers, caption, and we can preview this to see if it works. If I refresh. Uh, click here. Now we get speakers down below. Okay, and now we need to get speakers from somewhere. And uh, we don't have this data anywhere. So we will fetch it. And uh, we will do this by adding uh, a reducer into Redux and uh, creating an action that will fetch this data from an API. And then we will render the list of speakers when we get it here. And we will connect it to the screen. Okay. So let's do this. So in our extension, conference schedule, in the app directory, we will create a new file and call it redux.js. Okay. Okay, it is just an empty file, Redux.js, inside of your uh, conference uh, schedule directory, app directory. And we want to create a new reducer here. And for that, we will be using uh, combined reducers uh, from Redux. And we will need a reducer. And that reducer will be the collection reducer from uh, at shoutm redux io so this is a library that enables you to uh, efficiently and easily fetch data from the internet and also map it to the state and uh, create a normalized state for all your data i will explain a bit later and uh, we will export default combine reducers speakers, collection, and now we need to uh, pass it, so it says it receives a schema, okay, we just need to pass it the name of our schema, and this is web sc in my case, dot people, dot people, so the first is web sc uh, is my developer name, then the, the name of my extension, this is the people extension, and the schema name is the people, this is the file that we modified there, and where we added talk ID and uh, github URL. Okay, and now we have a reducer that uh, displays, uh, that uh, maps speakers uh, into the state. And as we defined it here, we need to ex export it from index.js. So now we will just import it, import reducer from Redux and just export it as a reducer. So this here uh, tells the core application extension loader to map this uh, reducer uh, into the namespace of my extension. So our state is organized that in the root of the state, you have a developer and extension name. So for example, shout in places, and then the subset of this key is completely yours. Whatever you return as a reducer will be mapped there. So if you export a reducer from your extension, it will be mapped to your developer name, extension name. So uh, we have now created a reducer that will have speakers in it, and we have mapped it to, uh, we have exported it from our extension. That means that it will be mounted in the state. And in the Redux, so we have a reducer here, but now we, we uh, need to fetch the data somehow. Okay, and for this, we can create a fun uh, action creator that will trigger a function, an action into Redux to fetch this for us. And we will call it uh, export uh, function fetch uh, speakers. 
edge speakers. And because we are using uh, Redux IO, we can use a find action creator from this library. And we will just return find uh, the same schema here. So I will extract it as a constant. Const speakers schema is this. Speaker schema find speaker schema. OK. Uh, and we will also create a selector that will return this for us from the state. So export function get speakers state return So to explain what is going on here, uh, so this library, Redux, Redux IO, uh, enables you to register a schema that explains how a content will be fetched from the internet. So we have uh, so the core, so we have a system extension that is called Shoutem CMS that automatically registers uh, all the schemas in your application that you uploaded to Shoutem, and now. Uh, we can just fetch the data from uh, our backend by just specifying the name of the schema that we want to fetch. And uh, there are several helpers in the library that allows us, allow us to map those uh, results to, to the state. So this is the collection reducer. It says, I want a collection of speakers here. And also find action says, find all speakers on the API and return them. This is the find action creator that we are defining here. And uh, we also have get collection, and get collection is the sorry, uh, I have I forgot to import uh, x function. X function is just a function that returns the namespace of your extension. So the get collection function will denormalize the state. So collection uh, and Rio. Redux, uh, Redux IO, IO automatically normalizes the entire state. So if you have, a, for example, a post that has an author, uh, and the author is a sub-object of a post, uh, it won't uh, map this author inside of a post. It will uh, create it in a separate place in, in the state so that the, you, all your authors are in one place. But uh, when you are using this on your screens, you don't want to uh, fetch the author separately and all that. And get collection is a denormalizer that will just assemble the object back to you, for you and return the original object that was returned from the API. So you get the benefit of a normalized state, but you don't have to worry about uh, searching for all those object, objects through the state to get the data that you want. And this is it. So uh, this code here will allow us to have a speaker's collection in the state and to fetch it from the API and also to, to fetch it from the state if we need it in the screen. OK, and now we will connect this to our screen by going into the conference. OK. By going into the conference detail screen, we will now implement a map state to props function uh, that receives a state and it will return an object that will have speakers here and to fetch them we'll use get speakers that we implemented a moment ago in our, our Redux file. So we will import that from here import uh, get speakers from Redux. OK, so we have get speakers. This means that uh, if I put this function here, map state to props, that I will get uh, speakers prop that will have the speakers from the state to my screen. OK, and I also want to redefine the map dispatch to props like this. Uh, 
because we need a function, we will need to fetch uh, the speakers if they are not here. So I would like to have the base map dispatch to props and add to it the fetch speakers uh, function that we also implemented in our Redux file. Okay. So in order for this to work, I have to change my imports. So I will now go here and I will say map dispatch to props as base map dispatch to props. So this is an alias for the uh, map dispatch to props that we imported from the original screen. And I also need to have fetch, fetch speakers here from Redux. Okay. So now, so I added fetch speakers here and I added as base map dispatch to props here. And with this, uh, we have a screen that will receive speakers and that will receive an action fetch speakers that it can use to fetch speakers from the API. And now uh, we will want to add a function here that will say a component did mount. So when our component renders, we want to see if we have speakers uh, if we, if we have speakers in, in the props. Okay. Uh, so a Redux IO library that we used to, uh, to fetch and uh, select this has several helpers. So one of them is in is initialized. Okay, so I will import this. is initialized, so I can say here uh, if not is initialized speakers so this means that we don't have any speakers uh, this dot props dot fetch speakers so trigger the action to fetch those speakers Okay, so this will ensure that when the component is initially rendered, that uh, uh, if the speakers are here, nothing happens. If they are not, they are fetched from the API. And now when we are rendering speakers, we can say something like, uh, we can also extract speakers from props. Uh, and now we can say, okay, if underscore that is empty, so I'm using lodash here, speakers, if speakers are empty, uh, return, return null. So we don't need to render anything because there are no speakers for this talk. And I need to import lodash. So I go to the top of the file and add import underscore from lodash. Okay. And in render speakers, I have now if is empty speakers written null or render this layout here. And okay, we can maybe test this now to see if it works. If I reload the app. Now, uh, I, I should initially have uh, no speakers label at the bottom of the screen. And when they fetch, they should appear. Okay, it's too fast. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we can show, sorry. We obviously have to implement speakers to see them because uh, they are just fetched too fast. <laughs> okay, uh, so I will add uh, a speakers list here, const uh, speakers list. Uh, and I will map over speakers, speakers dot map. speaker and now I have to render something for each speaker uh, to start with I will just render a plain text and I will say speaker that first name uh, speaker that last name And let's put this below the divider. Okay, 
So let's see, we have we have to import the text as well. Let's see now. Now we should see speakers. Okay. They don't look nice, but they're here. So you can see that all the speakers are here. So we have an issue here that we are showing all the speakers for each talk. So this is not okay. We will have to filter them. We will do this later. And uh, now we will first change the UI and add an ability to click on a speaker to open details of that speaker. And then we will just filter them to, uh, according to the talk that they are speaking at. And this is it. So this will be the final version. Okay. So the layout of the speaker, so we can search for different layouts here. For example, I will go under rows. And I will find something that looks okay. So this this layout should be fine for us. Okay, I will copy this. And instead of this, I will put this here. Now instead of the icon, I want to use an image. Image. Style name, small avatar. So this is just the style of this image and source will be an object that has an URI and URI is the speaker that image that URL view vertical subtitle speaker that first name speaker that last name And we'll remove this. So I now need a view. A row view image subtitle. And icon. Let's see how this looks like. If I refresh, click here, and now I get a list of speakers that look like this. Okay, but they are not clickable. Okay, so now we will make them clickable and then filter them, and that's it. Sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can wait. Yeah, row, I just copied the row from, okay, but maybe it's easier for you to retype it uh, than to search for it. I mean, you have this uh, exact code in a repo, so you can open the screen and just copy paste this section and uh, avoid typing. Maybe it's not exactly the same, but yeah. Just don't put touchable opacity. That's the next step. So you'll have to. Then you'll have to implement a click handler. And it will, yeah. If you don't want to preview it, if you don't to, if you don't want to preview it, then you can put it there. But it won't work until you implement the click handler and all that.
ครับสำหรับสิ่งที่จะทำคือเราจะเลือกที่จะเปิดหน้าจอที่จะแสดงว่ามีหนึ่งหนึ่งเสียงดังนั้นผมเห็นคำที่ผิดในระบบที่ผมเปิดที่นี้ดังนั้นเราจะเลือกที่จะแสดงว่ามีหนึ่งหนึ่งเสียงดังนั้นผมเห็นคำที่ผิดในระบบที่ผมเปิดที่นี้ดังนั้นเราจะเลือกที่จะแสดงว่ามีหนึ่งหนึ่งเสียงดังนั้นผมเห็นคำที่ผิดในระบบที่ผมเปิดที่นี้ดังนั้นเราจะเลือกที่จะแสดงว่ามีหนึ่งหนึ่งเสียงดังนั้นผมเห็นคำที่ผิดในระบบที่ผมเปิดที่นี้ดังนั้นเราจะเลือกที่จะแสดงว่ามีหนึ่งหนึ่งเสียงดังนั้นผมเห็นคำที่ผิดในระบบที่ There is a function there called Open Details screen that can open a details of one speaker. We will take this function and add it to our screen here, anywhere. Let's say here, uh, Open Details screen. I will rename it to Open uh, Speaker Details, and let's say it receives a speaker. And okay, it will take navigate to. It will navigate to a screen. I now have to change this namespace of the screen because it's called the web sc that people that people little screen. And in the props, person is my speaker. Okay. So this function will now navigate to uh, to the detail screen of one speaker. And in order to trigger it. I will wrap the entire row here of a speaker with a touchable opacity. So this is a React Native component that enables someone to touch on the view, and when you touch the view, it will change the opacity of of the containing view. And I will implement on press here. So this is a callback when someone taps, and I will say I want to call. Uh, this that uh, open speaker details and pass in a speaker that we are rendering. Okay, now we will close this and we will close it below. t o u c h opacity. Fix the indentation and import it. And this is it. So now, when I tap on someone, it will open the details of that speaker. Yeah. So now we can navigate to our speakers, and the only thing that was uh, that is left is that is that we just filter the speakers by talk ID. So this is just one call to low dash filter, and then we would get only the speakers that should be displayed below each talk, and that's it. Thank you for coming, for listening to us, and uh, if you have any feedback, please uh, let us know. And yeah, we, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, how was it? How do you like shout them? Do you think it's useful to you? Would you use it in your normal work? And stuff like that. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat>